the anatomy of the eye. I don't need to go through this. You know all of this stuff. You know the fact that there's an anterior compartment. There's something going on back here. There's a lens somewhere here. There's some muscles that contract and constrict things. Okay, ciliary muscles and an iris, and there's a retina. This is basic medical stuff. The way I look at the eye when I think about an eye is I look at the outer portion of the eye. So I look at the whites of their eyes and the skin surrounding that. I then look at everything in the eye. So I draw concentric circles. So let's have a look at outside the eye and the surrounding tissues. So hand up who thinks this is orbital cellulitis. Hands up who thinks this is periorbital cellulitis. Well done. So this is definitely periorbital cellulitis. It's an infection of the eyelid, the periorbital tissues. Usually the most common causes is an urti, a recent urti that they've had. Uh, and if they've got sinus infections, they can almost cause it. And the staph aureus is the one. What about this one? Is this uh, periorbital or orbital? Okay, so this one here, what they're going to get is when it's really bad, they'll have some proptosis as well as ophthalmoplegia because there's all of this muck and pus that's sitting there around the muscles and doesn't allow them to move properly. Um, and again, sinusitis or in local infections can cause this, but post-surgery these things happen. So if they've had recent eye surgery, you've got to be very careful of these. And the thing that dictates whether it's periorbital from orbital cellulitis is this septum that occurs there that splits the two. And one infection is external and one is more internal. So the red eye. Red flags for the red eye. There's a decreased visual acuity. There's an afferent pupillary defect. They have what's called a ciliary flush. And a ciliary flush is... A small a, amount of redness, a flushed redness that just circles the cornea. Remember, we speak about uh, perilimbic sparing in Kawasaki's disease. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Well, this is the opposite. Instead of having a white around the cornea and everything else being injected, this is actually redness around the cornea. Uh, they've got significant pain. They may have some corneal op opacity any sort of photophobia, and headache and nausea can be eye signs. These are red flags. Let's look at the whites of their eyes. So diagnosis is a patient that's got a little bit of injection in their sclera and a few of the overlying vessels. They may be asymptomatic. They may have mild discomfort. It may be associated with, um, with inflammatory bowel disease, this. Um, or it may be associated with too much sun exposure. And it's, you, you see it, and it's fairly innocuous, and it's episcleritis. So episcleritis is an inflammation of the sclera. Um, they may have mild irritation, or they may just have this injection and not much else. You've got to start thinking of some of these diseases like rheumatoid uh, and SLE. It's a self-limiting disease, though. If there's not a lot of pain. I'm not going to get too excited. Um, and... Some people talk about non-steroidals. I would give them some sunglasses and tell them not to stay out in the sun too long. And I think that's enough. I'm, this is the white tail or less, all right? Who cares? Next, severe eye pain now in this injection. So all the scleral vessels, as you can see there, are dilated. Um, in this particular disease, it can be segmental. It can be diffuse. Um, and about 50% of cases are associated with systemic disease. So let's have a look at this one. And this is scleritis. Okay? It's a significant infection of the sclera. Uh, and they'll get severe ocular pain and they'll get this injection that's occurring. And as I said, a significant number will be associated with systemic disease. Uh, and it can cause other issues. So symptoms, severe pain, photophobia, no discharge. Um, and extremely tender if you touch that sclera. And if you get a spread, then you get the visual uh, acuity affected. There's a, there's a link to autoimmune disorders. Some of them are a topical infection, and some of them are related to trauma. The push is to treat all of these patients systemically. They've got a lot of pain. They're going to need some good... Um, analgesia, but I know that we 
we push to get these patients out and home. We'll give them some psychoplegia and see if we can get them out. The pain is usually enough that they're not going to be able to get out. If it's an infectious cause, they need antibiotics, they need good analgesia, they need to come into hospital. Uh, conjunctivitis, that little pink thing, you may get a bit of discharge, a little bit of muck in the eye in the morning. It's a disease of exclusion. I could care less about it. The only time I care about it is if it occurs in the neonate because I've got to start worrying about things like chlamydia and other such nasties. And at all neonates get admitted for this. What's the one on the what's the one on your left called? What's the one on your right called then? Pterygium. And the one that doesn't reach the cornea or doesn't get onto it is called a pinguecula. Do I care? I care a lot. But this is something that the ophthalmologist is going to have to take away, and they can recur again if they have a pterygium. There's not much that I'm going to do in the emergency department. How about subconjunctival hemorrhages that occur in these patients? They're localised, they've got no pain, they're not extending around, we don't think there's anything going on. They might have sneezed, they might have coughed, they might have vomited, they might have high blood pressure, and you've got a bit of a bleed. That's fine. I had one of these when I was uh, a few years ago when one of my kids decided that they wanted to see what would happen if they stuck a straw in my eye. Okay. So as I was sleeping, my eye went Koof, straight in the eye. <laughs> it's congen... It's... <laughs> okay. So let's have a look at the cornea. So painful. Um, the pupil is constricted. It's not reactive. What's the diagnosis? Yeah, so this is iritis, or it's called sort of uveitis. One of the things to, to see in this is this ciliary flush. You see that little flush there? That redness just around there? That's called a ciliary flush. A little more pronounced in there, but that's a nice one. That's a ciliary flush. Um, uh, often called anterior uveitis because uh, it's part of the uveal tract, and the uveal tract is the, the iris, the ciliary body, and the choroid. Um, so visual acuity, there may be a mild decrease in that. The pupils are constricted, they're not reactive. The cornea is normal, though, and there is a cell and flare response in the anterior chamber when you look at it on slit lamp, and that's because you'll get white cells being shed, and I'm hope hopefully I've got one of those to show you. Um, They do get a relief of psychoplegics, these patients, uh, so something to give them, because psychoplegics will um, dilate and then decrease the chance of adhesion of the iris to the lens as well. They're, they're a good drug to give. Uh, they're the causes. And that's what you tend to see. You see this cell and flare response in the anterior chamber when you look at it on slit lamp. A snowstorm, cell and flare. The management of iritis depends on the cause. Topical steroids may be appropriate, cycloplegics may be appropriate. What about this one? This one you've got a sort of a milkiness in the cornea, looks a bit of dematous, looks, but you've got injections surrounding it, and this is significant pain. This is keratitis. Um, visual acuity may be decreased in this. Uh, the conjunctiva is injected in many cases and the intraocular pressure will be normal. And it's associated with eye surgery and trauma in many cases, uh, but there are bugs associated with it and the viral form is the one we sometimes see. And so you see these dendritic ulcers here um, when you when you put some, uh, some dye in there, you see the dendritic ulcers under cobalt blue light, and this is sort of herpes simplex. You know? So in a person that's got this with a red eye that's, in, that's inflamed and looks very upset, the diagnosis is osteophthalmicus, and these patients really need systemic antivirals. So if they've got the sort of the, the rash, the shingles type rash, and they've got a big red eye, They'll need, to, uh, they'll need to get some uh, antivirals pretty quickly. So this is the one I care about, and this is the one you should care about. Acute closed-angle glaucoma, 
We've heard of the compartment syndrome. This is the compartment syndrome of the eye. Um, so here's a case. Case, so I, I was having a look at the, uh, at the triages on the computer of the patients who were out the front, and I saw, I saw a patient with headache and cataract. Now, I was thinking about writing a lecture on the red eye and glaucoma, and I thought, just like Gino said, you know, you see all these cases once you start writing a lecture, I thought, what would be the chances that this is actually glaucoma? And this patient was a category, triage category four or something, was going to be sitting in the waiting room until, you know, next year sometime, really. So I said, let, let me just go and have a quick look, just in case it is glaucoma. And guess what? I got a blog out of it. So it was glaucoma, <laughs> all right? So I love it when these things happen. So you see it, you just treat it this pain. So on example, he had a very painful right eye. This is written up in the blog, and you can see all the pictures and everything. And he was causing him a headache. And he said it had happened for several days. He could only see outlines uh, of my fingers. He'd been like this for a week. There you go. And this is a picture of his eye. So what else was happening? He had the ciliary flush. He had a bit of a ciliary flush there. Yeah. He had a cloudy corneria. His visual acuity was decreased. His pupil wasn't very reactive when I tried. I, I, I put some fluorescein staining in there just in case I was missing something. There's nothing there. And then I said, well, he's got to have glaucoma. There's nothing else he can have. Okay. And how do I diagnose it? By pressure in the eye. So I need a tonometer. And the way to diagnose it is to look at the pressure difference in the eyes. And the usual sort of pressure with a tonometry pen is about 12. Now, then I went for the hunt. And this is the hunt where you try and find the, the pen. So I found the pen. The department had a pen. And um, I couldn't measure the pressure. And I said, this pen is a piece of junk, an absolute piece of junk. I was so upset. You have to calibrate it, turn it over, flip it over, do this to it, press the buttons, throw it up against the wall, do all these things that you need to do to it, and it still didn't work. And I'm pressing away. This guy's got a bit of local in his eye. I'm pressing away. I'm pressing away, and I'm checking it. You stupid pen. There's nothing working. And he's just sitting there thinking, you idiot doctor. <laughs> and then I, it occurred to me. The pen wasn't reading, not because the pen was faulty, but the pressure was so friggin' high in his eye. So then it occurred to me, let's measure the pressure in the other eye. And it was 11. So what do you do then? And you call the ophthalmology person, you give him all the stuff you're going to give him, and we'll go through that in a second. So, so aqueous humor is produced by the ciliary body. Uh, it circulates through the posterior chamber, and then it enters the anterior chamber at some point, uh, usually through the pupil, and then goes through the trabecular meshwork back into the bloodstream. In narrow angle glaucoma, you get a uh, an increased, you get an increased, um, so there's the I'll show it to you on this. Trabecular meshwork. Sorry, I can't see much of the screen, so I've got a tiny little thing on my computer. Um, in narrow angle of our coma, there's an increased pressure, and this can go on, and it can damage the optic nerve. It can damage the front part. It can damage all parts of your eye, really. And so the difference is that you've got a closure here. This is open angle glaucoma, closed angle glaucoma here. You're not getting any reabsorption. And so he had erythema. He had a ciliary flush, severe pain. The pupil was stuck. It wasn't reacting. A decreased visual acuity. This is an emergency. It's an emergency now because it's in the emergency department. It's been there for a week, but it hasn't been an emergency then. But now it's an emergency because it's in my emergency department. So compartment syndrome of the eye. You do the tonometry. And the whole idea of glaucoma is to break the pupil, to allow, to break the pupil back, to allow all this, all this humor to flow. Um, but it won't work until you start decreasing intraocular pressures. And so uh, you start off with some acetazolamide, you give this IV, I gave 500 milligrams IV, uh, and then you want to try and decrease aqueous humor production, so I gave him some beta blocker drops. Um, and then we had something called alpha-gam in the emergency department there. This is an alpha-2 adrenergic 
agent, and it's actually quite good at decreasing uh, aqueous humor further. So I gave him a bit of that. I didn't give him any mannitol. I just gave him those things, talked to the uh, ophthalmology reg, and uh, we transferred this guy to a larger hospital and he, and he got treated. Beware in these patients if you give them pilocarpine and it is, uh, it is the wrong sort of glaucoma, you can actually cause issues. The normal pressure is between 10 and 21, all right? Most people will say it's about 14 or 15, you had a pressure of about 11, this guy. Um, you've got to be sure that you can use this equipment because I tell you, I felt like a right idiot when this was the first time I was trying to use it and I couldn't quite get it right. In the end, though, we got the diagnosis, we treated him. I don't think his outcome was going to be spectacular given that he had this for a whole week. So the take-home message is differentiate periorbital from orbital cellulitis. Really, apart from that, they got a lot of pain in the eye. You're going to talk to ophthalmology. You're going to treat them. They'll have potentially some kind of itis in the eye which will be associated with an inflammatory, whether it's a systemic disease or a local disease, um, but once all that dust is cleared, the one we really care about and the one that we really need to push hard on is the acute close angle glaucoma. So if they present with headache and any visual problems, so remember Gino this morning spoke about chest pain plus. So in dissection, chest pain plus leg, chest pain, anything above and below the diaphragm or chest pain and neurology is dissection. Unless proven otherwise, you've got to go hunting for it. If you've got headache and abnormal visual acuity, you've got to go hunting for glaucoma. And the afferent pupillary defect helps us identify that group of patients with a potential optic nerve issue. It could be a brainstem issue as well, but the optic. So always test the Marcus gun or the afferent pupillary defect. All right, thank you. All right, good, good. Any questions? Don't worry about applauding. Don't applaud me. Don't applaud me. I work for a living. Don't applaud me. <laughs>